Hey and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about linear viscoelasticity and specifically how you should deal with the bulk relaxation part of the prony series that goes into a linear viscoelastic material model. So remember, linear viscoelasticity needs both an elastic set of parameters and then a prony series that describes the relaxation response of the material. The elastic properties contains the shear modulus and the bulk modulus. So those are something you need to know experimentally or at least have a feel for what they are. And then for the prony series, same thing happened there. You need to know how the shear relaxation occurs and then the bulk relaxation, the bulk modulus change with time that is. In most cases, you don't necessarily measure the bulk relaxation. You can do it, for example, using a volumetric a uh, stress relaxation test or a volumetric creep test. But it's really difficult to measure the, uh, the bulk relaxation from a DMA test. There are not many DMA machines that I know of that can measure the bulk relaxation response as a function of frequency. So what people do is they often simply ignore the bulk relaxation and say, well, most relaxation should be from the shear, and that's what I'm going to do. But that can have consequences, and that could be give you results that you don't necessarily need. So today I'm going to talk about how you can investigate this and make sure that you get results that you are uh, anticipating. So here's my example. This is a DMA a test that was performed uh, at many different frequencies. And uh, if I calibrate an ANSYS near hook and material model with 30 prony series terms to this, you can see in blue line here, in M calibration, the fit looks really good. We can match the DMA frequency data for both storage and loss modulus very well. Um, the key here, though, is to think a little bit about what, what does this do in this case, and how do I do this? Right? So in this case, in M calibration, I set the G1 and the K1 values, which are the shear and the bulk relaxation terms, to be equal. But in the bottom, I for stem calibration to make the bulk relaxation zero by setting this sum k variable to be zero. And um, so there is no bulk relaxation in this case. So to investigate what this does is I'm going to, I created three virtual load cases in M calibration. I'm going to plot them here. So these are uniaxial tension at three different strain rates. And if I run this here, I can see that the really, really slow strain rates, 10 to the minus 6, is in red, and then 10 to the 6, and then insanely fast, 1 e20 per second uh, tension. We get the green curve. And I picked these strain rates simply from the DMA frequency spectrum that was available. So we'll see the stress strain curves looks pretty good. If I want to plot now something else, I'm going to plot the Poisson's ratio on the y-axis here we'll see that in this case, the Poisson's ratio is between, for the slow, uh, highest rate, the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.49 something, and for the slowest rate, the 0 0.4995 or something like that. So the, the material is almost incompressible, and the reason that it becomes like that is because I picked a D parameter for the hyperelastic response that was very small, 1e e minus 4. Well, say that your material doesn't have such a high Poisson's ratio, say it's smaller. So say it's 0 0.01. In M calibration, I can run this test now. I can see that the stress strain curves look about the same. But now we have a very different prediction of the Poisson's ratio. In the blue, the, the green curve here, which is the highest rate, we get the Poisson's ratio from this linear viscoelastic material model that is less than 0 0.3. And at the slowest rate, we get a, uh, a Poisson's ratio that is uh, almost 0 0.5. That is, in this case, we get the Poisson's ratio that becomes very strongly dependent on the strain rate. And that could seem a little bit odd. And why is that? Well, it's because the shear modulus changes a lot with strain rate, but the bulk modulus is assumed to be constant in this calibration. We made the bulk relaxation zero. So an option that sometimes is very useful is to make the bulk relaxation uh, in fact, the same as the shear relaxation. So if I made this sum k equal to sum g, then what I have is a material model that have um, a stress strain prediction that is pretty similar to before, but now I'm changing both the shear and the bulk modulus at the same time, so that means that the Poisson's ratio will be more or less independent of strain rate, as we can see on the figure to the right here. 
So here is the, here is the deal. When you're dealing with a material mall, a linear viscoelastic material mall, that changes its uh, stiffness significantly at high frequencies compared to low frequencies, sometimes it's better to make the, the bulk relaxation also occur. And perhaps you can even make it similar or the same as the shear relaxation in order to get a Poisson's ratio that is uh, independent of strain rate. Of course, in real life, it would be good to know. So that would mean some experimentation to determine is the really the Poisson's ratio strain rate dependent or not. And that will depend on the material, obviously. But don't just blindly assume that there is no bulk relaxation, because then you can end up with a situation where you have a, a Poisson's ratio that becomes so strongly dependent on strain rate that it doesn't make sense. And in cases like that, I sometimes make the bulk relaxation the same as the shear relaxation and uh, assume that's the better uh, material model. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them below.